Ali indi la. Baš ki tebi že ki ni njegov. I was asked to um, make a video on, uh, they call it grief and loss. Uh, for me, I don't really use that word for when it comes to grief and loss. I use the, the Ojibwe word is I am. It's because Ojibwe and Akian. That's when you pay lineage to the to those that have passed on. And I did make a video earlier, but I just wanted to have to make another one because I had to make it as short as I can because the, the longer they are in this little device, it, it takes forever. I'll make a longer one on my other device. Jibai Nakian is um, when they have uh, someone passes on about a lot more times than any, it has to do with a lot of the belongings of the person that has passed on. And I'll talk about my own experience. I'm not gonna talk about anybody other than just what happened to me through grief and loss. I lost quite a few, went to quite a few funerals. I lost uh, my mom and dad, uh, so my uncles, a lot of my family passed on. Uh, let me see here. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about, about grief and loss about how you, you, you deal with it, you can deal with it. It's not very difficult, I guess it depends on the individual, yeah, and how close they were. But I was very close to a lot of people that have passed, have gone on to spirit. And they, one of the main things that, that they, you carry with you is what that person taught you. Like, I always hear well, the old ones talk about this. Like they, they're in a good place right now. They're in a, they're, they were more times than any. Not all the time, of course, but sometimes they they, they suffer. And then just that, it's it's like for me, my mom when she passed on, it was like not. It was almost like I, I, I don't get me wrong. I didn't. It was like a relief because she suffered so much when she was here. And. Me and my brother looked after her a lot. <clears throat> had to go there, and, but she did a lot of stuff on her own, even though she had like, her legs were, a, one was cut off. Her fingers were somewhere cut off because they just, it was just a horrible thing to go through with diabetes. They get sick and they, have, they start having um, seizures, grand mal seizures, yeah. So I'm very, a very uh, familiar with that uh, grief and loss, and uh, there's uh, quite a few people that I've met for the past, uh, since then, since after my mom passing on, that were very close to me, very close. They're like brothers, and they passed on. Some of them I didn't even go to their funeral. Why? Because it was hard for me to grasp that. I, did, I like I mean I didn't believe it. It happened. It had happened, and uh, I, I didn't go. I don't know how people felt about that. A lot of my buddies went. I didn't feel ashamed or anything. It's very close to the to that gentleman, the one one particular gentleman. There was two of them. There was actually quite a few, but <clears throat> yeah, I went to to one older guy's funeral, and one of the biggest things I'll get to right here is that they have giveaways after a year. And that's for the people's stuff. And for me, I gave a lot of my mom's stuff away to everybody. I just took it, put it out, and let people take it. I didn't have a big soiree or take it to some place and say, yeah, only you could take it. It's like, no, I, I... Do people do things differently? And I just... Nobody took the initiative to do that, so I just took it on upon myself to just give it all away. And that's what I did. And people took it from the street. I just could not keep it all. And I knew for in in my heart that it was something I needed to do. Like she had so much stuff. And it just was not for me it was it was not for me to hold on to anymore. And I had dreams about that afterwards, like uh 
before then actually that actually happened. That's why I knew I needed it was time to do that is because I had a dream of her telling me that how I was living my life was affecting her on the other side because she was like sitting down at her table. The dream felt so real <clears throat> and she was suffering still. And she says, I don't want to bother you, my son. You helped, you helped me out so much while I was on the other side. The dream, it was so real. That's why I felt like it was, a, it was right there. And then when I talk about grief and losses, I talk about my mom a lot because why you're still, I know there was still a long, a strong connection there after she passed on. She, I learned a lot about how to let go because we were very close and <clears throat> she told us a lot about how she felt bad about me getting scolded really in a really harsh way when I was young. Like, I mean, I don't want to get into it too much, but I mean, we used to get scolded pretty heavy duty. Like, we'd get strapped, like, full force. Like, just, whoosh. But she felt bad about that. And that would had to do a lot with my dad and taking it out on us. And it was a good thing that she talked about, I guess, at the time. Be like, long even before she passed on. She told me a lot of things. She had was in a seizure one time for two... She was in a coma for two weeks. And she could hear... She could hear my, my, my sister calling her, crying. So she come back, and she told me about that. And she said, next time that happens, um, make sure that they don't come back. They don't bring me back. And that for me at the time was was a lot. For me, I don't mind talking about it now because I dealt with a lot of things. I still feel their presence at times. Even my dad, Shomas Nokomis. <coughs> I want to get this downloaded, so I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'll keep adding on more. I have to talk about a lot more stuff about grief and loss, or what I call G by Anakian. That's what the Anishinaabeg we use, we say that word, Jibai Anaki, and I'll break that word down for you in the next one. And this is something I'll probably have to make quite a few videos about because it's very, I guess, sensitive for a lot of people, I don't know, if that's a good way of putting it. And I don't want to um, misdirect anybody. But this is Anishinaabeg ways talking about Ojibwe. And like every place is different, but they're all the same. For instance, they have a fire for four days or four nights. And almost every time I've had a funeral with family members that were close to me, that were very close. It was always four days and four nights they have that fire. Why? It takes four nights, four days and four nights for them to get to the other side. <clears throat> and then we sing on the drum for, for those the, during that time. And that's that's always been like that. I've never I've never seen it different. I mean, I obviously I have seen it differently, where that they had different things going on. But that's not for me to say about that. I don't know. I don't. It's not. I'm not an expert in that. I say miigwech for listening to this this video. I gotta make it short because I don't know if it'll download. Uh, I will get back again later when I. I go over this one, make sure that I cover what I cover and that I'll cover more. Uh, give up men, me, which I hope.